Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Kat and I am your Twitch streaming and content creation big sister. And if you're returning, welcome back. I've missed you. But thank you again guys for 25k subscribers on YouTube. I am so happy that we managed to hit 25k. We hit it when I was away visiting family for Christmas, so I couldn't thank you guys, but thank you so 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 much. If you like my content, I'd appreciate it if you like this video also and if you subscribe because my goal is to hit 50k in 2024, so you guys will help me get to that goal, but we're 35k first maybe hopefully. Anyways, in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to start TikTok in 2024. You've probably heard a lot about TikTok. What is this thing, this mysterious app that a lot of people seem to be blowing up on and, you know, their Twitch careers are made because they've gotten big on this app. Actually, that's literally myself. But how do you use it? How do you get started? It seems so different from other social media platforms that you may be used to in the past. Don't worry, me, Kat, your Twitch streamer, Big Sister, is here to help you out. If you haven't already, please go to the App Store and please download the app, okay? <laughs> but let me tell you guys, okay? Learn a lesson. Ideally, if you are traveling, please don't download the app when you are traveling. Please download it back when you are in a major country, like for instance, the US or the UK, etc. Canada, for instance. Learn this lesson, okay? There's a streamer that I know, he basically went and downloaded TikTok and made his account in one of the minor US islands. Um, it was like Puerto Rico or something. I don't remember the island exactly. However, TikTok features are region locked. So because he made an account in what, and I believe Puerto Rico, but it was basically one of the minor US islands, it didn't have a lot of the features that he would have gotten if he made his account in the US. And it was really unlucky because he had to make a brand new account to get access to, you know, features like the TikTok creativity beta fund, which is a fund that pays you out for views that you get on videos over one minute long. And many creators make a couple hundred to a couple thousand dollars per month off that. And because he made his, his account in a region that did not have access to that feature, he unfortunately didn't get it. So. Just keep that in mind. If you are from the US and you're visiting family in a different country, you travel to a different country, etc., please make your account in at least like a country that has access to most of these features. Now, when it comes to making an account, make a memorable username. So what I mean by this is you don't want a username that is too difficult to remember. I have a whole series on how to come up with a good username. This is a whole side tangent. A lot of people get mad at my usage of the words good and bad. Dude, I graduated with a biology degree, okay? Not an English degree. My English vocabulary is really bad. I didn't become a Twitch streamer to then have to use a lot of good words so yeah i'm sorry i'm not good with words um but how to make a mm, easier to remember username is what i meant so basically tldr you don't want to put a ton of numbers in the beginning end or in the middle of your username you ideally don't want to substitute letters with numbers as in like if you're making the name catliente but then i change the i to a one and then the e at the end to a three yeah people aren't going to remember what number was substituted for what and they're going to have trouble trying to type out your username and again if your name is extremely difficult to spell it's going to be hard for people to remember basically if you're doing this for content creation purposes you want this to essentially be a brand and you can always change your name later so don't worry too much about that but i would recommend making a relatively memorable username third in tiktok you can actually set a nickname for yourself so you have not only your username but your nickname and when you're leaving comments under people's tiktok videos your nickname is what shows up not your username so in your nickname what i would do is add a little blurb as to what type of content you typically create so if you see on my page my nickname is cat and then stream advice because i do stream advice content other people would do like you know cat and then financial advice or you know cat valorant creator cat twitch streamer other people directly put their twitch link which i think is a good idea as well so whatever it is type of content you're trying to create if you're an art creator streamer etc i would put your nickname and then line and then little summary of what content you make on your actual page or what you're planning to make again you can change the username whenever you want so you can always make one and then change it later when you don't like it now in terms of what videos do well on tiktok what is the current meta first things first video length as of filming which is january 2024 shorter videos as an under 30 seconds or very long videos as in over one minute tend to do well on this platform. I find that I do not see videos in between 30 seconds and one minute do well. Just for some reason, that window is just the, the pit of despair on TikTok and all videos fall into it and lose views if you manage to hit that window. I don't know why, but it does. Secondly, every time social media platforms create new features, those features get an internal boost from the platform. That's just how it is because they want you to use the new features. So TikTok recently, recently, it was about a 
couple six months now probably but they linked with CapCut which is a phone video editing app and it's also in browser you can now go to CapCut and then make like a TikTok video in it and then directly export it straight into TikTok and you can see this when you're scrolling through TikTok there'll be a little icon that says like CapCut trends over the video and then you can kind of click it and it'll open in CapCut those are heavily pushed now by TikTok because it's a new feature they released and secondly photo slides to where instead of a video you just put a comp compilation of photos together and they all play in a slideshow. That's also a new feature that TikTok recently created and TikTok has been pushing the photo slides. I would capitalize on it. Now, how many hashtags would you use for TikTok? I would use three to five hashtags. That still seems pretty standard. I have basically seen, and I did a data poll where I grabbed like 100 videos off my 40 page, the first 100 and analyzed a lot of data off of them. And what I found was videos tend to have less than seven hashtags or over 20 and nothing in between that were on the 40 page. I would not do over 20 it does look very spammy so i would keep it under seven also hashtag fyp and hashtag fyp with that slanted smiley face thing those don't do anything it's literally the equivalent of not putting a hashtag a lot of people are like cat i see videos with that on my for you page all the time my guy that's called confirmation bias, okay? One handful of videos that has the hashtag FYP may show up on your For You page. But what you don't see is the billions of people who used hashtag FYP and it didn't go anywhere and it got like three views. You only see the successful video. So of course it may look like a lot of people are not putting hashtags or using hashtag FYP, but the general trend is that it doesn't work. I still would recommend you add a trending sound in the TikTok video. So most videos on the For You page still have a trending TikTok sound on there. How do you find a trending TikTok sound? Scroll on the For You page. What audio are people using? Just click the audio, save it if you like it. That's it. That's all I do to find trending sounds. If you do want to go under the music library, you can also see this thing that says like TikTok viral, which is like a little yellow orange icon with a fire. Those are also like typically trending sounds as well if you're being lazy and don't want to scroll the For You page. I find the For You page method is better, especially if you find songs that are constantly repeated. Like if multiple people are using the same audio, that's a trending sound right there. So unfortunately, the best solution is to be chronically online, which I wish I could give you a better solution, but it is what it is. Let's go into actual video strategy, how to format your video so that it would get views. There's a couple of things that I've seen in 2024 that is successful and meta, I suppose, for these videos. In my opinion, where you should put the most effort in your video is the first three seconds. This goes for a YouTube video. Well, I guess 10 seconds for the YouTube video, but YouTube video, YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, and TikTok. Talk. The short form vertical platforms, the first three seconds, you want to grab their attention. If you can't grab their attention in the first three seconds, they're going to swipe and they will never go back to your video. It's extremely unforgiving. So the TikTok user viralvideo.club has made a series of videos showing very successful TikTok hooks. And I think these hooks are all amazing ideas. I would recommend borrowing these hooks that this person has suggested. Secondly, series do really well on TikTok. And what I mean by this is a video series that gets people invested in you the creator. So, I mean, I'm, if you've been on TikTok, I'm sure you've probably heard of the Chica Dance guy who has been doing the Chica Dance for about over a thousand days. The series is he's going to do the Chica Dance until he gets a girlfriend. People will follow you if you have a series because they are invested in you as the creator and they're invested in seeing the result, the success. Another one, there's another person who recently on TikTok had gotten double jaw surgery and a lot of people, myself included, followed them to see the recovery of their double jaw surgery because I'm now invested in him as a creator and I'm just curious as to how the recovery process of such an invasive procedure would look like. Third, there was another girl on TikTok and I'm blanking at her username as well, but she was doing a video series in which she was trying to lose weight with VR. So she had a VR and that huge, like, you know, that huge, like hamster ball gimbal thing treadmill where you get strapped in and you can like run in place on it with a VR headset. She was using that to try to lose weight and a lot of people were following her because people were invested to see, oh, does this actually work? And can she achieve what she's aiming to achieve? A fourth one is a guy who was doing a house tour. He was doing a house tour of his relative's home and he was showing his niece's bedroom and he was like, Look at my niece's bedroom. And it was an extremely rich and wealthy and really, really luxury bedroom that I really wish I had. And in the comment section, he put, wait till you see my nephew's room. That was such a smart caption to put because it's now a series. Now you have people invested into seeing whether the rest of this house lives up to how luxury the niece's room is. I gave you four examples, but you basically get my point. All of these creators have created video series that gets the public invested in them and to see the outcome. I ideally though would recommend 
creating the series that has less of a foreseeable end. For instance, the Chica Dance guy could theoretically do the Chica Dance forever if he just never got a girlfriend. But the guy who is giving the house tour, he will eventually run out of rooms to show you. And then he needs to come up with something else to do. If you have a series that has a foreseeable end, like the person with the house, which again, you're limited in the amount of rooms, once people get the payoff of seeing the entire house, they're not gonna be invested in you as a creator anymore because they've gotten what they wanted. But if you were somebody like the double jaw surgery guy, his whole account is kind of themed as like a glow up page to where after he recovers from his double jaw surgery, he could still go into more content series because now he could do like a full glow up. Now that he's gotten his surgery, he could maybe do like a hairstyle thing or like skin carrots glow up, etc. outfit glow up. That is something that could be segmented off of his original series. So you kind of see where I'm going with this. One type of series has like segments, you could branch off of it and there's no necessary foreseeable end, but he could create an end if he wanted to. Whereas in other series, there is an end and it's done once the house tour is finished. And ideally, we do want to create a series that could tie back into your other platforms if you do have other social media platforms. Like for instance, if you are a Twitch streamer. So if you're a Twitch streamer and let's say you stream Valorant, I would recommend creating a series that is related to what you stream on Twitch. So in that case, would be related to Valorant so that you could also get people to funnel into your Twitch stream as well. Hypothetically, if the house tour person were to go and be a Twitch streamer as well, well, let, no one would really be invested in his Twitch stream because he's not streaming house tours most likely. He's probably streaming a game and what he's blew up on TikTok for is not what he's streaming. I think this one's really cute if you could somehow naturally incorporate it into your content, but it's having a little catchphrase so people could remember you by. I personally need to implement this in my own videos as well, but we all know, and you probably heard me throughout the entirety of this video, I couldn't remember anybody's username. All I could remember was descriptions of their TikTok video, like the girl who was trying to lose weight using VR or the guy who was giving the house toys. I don't unfortunately remember their names because that's the nature of TikTok. TikTok is very content focused rather than creator focused, and that is just how it is. However, if you've been on TikTok, you've all heard of Vivian, your rich BFF. She does financial advice and that is her catchphrase in the beginning of all of her videos. Just, hi, I'm Vivian, your rich BFF, and today, da -da -da, whatever the rest of the video is about. That is so much more helpful in getting the viewer to remember your name and your username so that they know who to look up to come back to the content. But these are all my little strategies for how to get started using TikTok in 2024. Man, I just kicked my camera. But if you also are a TikTok user for previous years, hopefully you managed to learn something from this video and hopefully it helps you out. Again, if this helped you out, make sure to like and subscribe down below. And don't forget to check me out on Etsy. I have sub badges, emotes, overlays that I sell for streamers. And I also have a coffee in which I have free art and free resources for content creators. I also stream on Twitch three days a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays at 7 p.m. PST. So I hope to catch you guys there or in another one of my videos. Peace.